towards home plate and maybe down the right field line. We'll keep an eye on that as things go along. Gage Miller ready to go, takes a first pitch just a little bit down and we are underway. Gage Miller's been one of the best leadoff bats in the SEC so far this year. Junior who transferred in after a couple of seasons. Junior college ball of Bishop State has been a tone setter for the Crimson Tide. One of the guys at Sanford can't afford to let them beat him tonight is Miller. Swing at that offering, 86 on the gun from Newman. Miller hitting almost 450. He's ninth in the country in hits coming into the week. Still a hitter's count here. The 2-1 is off speed and lifted into foul ground. Might be playable, though. Horowitz took a weird angle and couldn't quite get there. Did take a, a unique angle. The wind is a factor, as Blake told you just a few moments ago. And Horowitz does his best to get over there. It's not an easy play, certainly one that Sanford wants to make on this great hitter, but it falls for a foul ball. So Miller has new life. He'll see a two and two from Jacob Newman. Leaves the breaking ball a little bit upstairs. Miller tied for the team lead in home runs with 11 for this Alabama ball club. He's been instant offense to start this year and he's on to start today. He draws a full count walk and just like that, Alabama has a base runner. Yeah, you'll hear the old timers talk about the baseball gods and they're not real, but it's karma. And anytime you have a pop-up in foul ground and this ball's low, that could have been an out potentially, turns into a walk and now Alabama's got something going. So Miller aboard in front of T.J. McCants. McCants shows bunt and couldn't get it down. That ought to show you young players out there something. This guy is tied for the lead in this club with 11 home runs, and we're in the first inning. He's one of the best hitters in the Southeastern Conference, and his head coach wanted him to bunt right there. So you got to be ready. Sanford infield was shifted over a little bit. Garrett State not anymore as this is lifted high and into right center field. Andrew Bennett working back there. Gives way to Aaron Walton who makes the grab. Good job here by Walton. McCants barely missed hitting the ball at the ballpark. Good job by Newman missing the barrel a little bit. Walton, who is a speedier outfielder and a little bit better outfielder than Bennett, he gives it time to get to his apex. As you see here, Bennett struggling a hair, and Walton says, I got it. That ball was in the air for forever. As you said, McCants just missed it. He's out number one. Brings in Ian Petrutz. Takes up and away. Transfers a plenty in this Alabama lineup. Petrutz one of them. Followed his head coach Rob Vaughn from Maryland to Tuscaloosa. And he pops this one behind home plate out of play. One ball, one strike here. Miller does not have a stolen base or a stolen base attempt this year at first base. This is not an Alabama team that runs a ton, although Miller's got a pretty hefty lead over at first. That's lifted down the line and left. Hit pretty well. Rodriguez going back to the track. That's off the fair pole and gone. Petrutz goes deep the other way, just keeps it fair, and the Crimson Tide are on the board first. 2 nothing. Alabama. Three batters in. Petrutz gets a ball elevated away from him, and he's very strong. This ends up being his fourth home run of the year. The win might have helped it a little bit, but the problem is not the solo shot off the foul pole. The problem is the leadoff walk. So instead of just a single run, it's a crooked number, and it's 2 nothing tied early. Fourth home run of the year for Petrutz after he went deep this past weekend against South Carolina. And Alabama's jumped out to an early lead in front of Evan Slights, who was first pitch swinging, but way out in front of that breaking ball. Same thing happened to Newman this past week against Mississippi State. Gave up two in the first inning, then settled down. We'll see how it unfolds. Newman's 0-1 misses downstairs. Slights 
Once again, the starter in right field for the tie today. Transferred in after starting his college career at Virginia, then made his way to Rutgers. Now down here in the SEC as he chops that one foul. You know, back in the old days, you had the baseball cards, and you saw this guy played for the Reds a few years, the Mets a few years, the Braves a few years. Got to do that with college players these days. 1-2 to Slight, rolled foul again. It's a long journey for Evan Slight. Massachusetts native was one of the best players in his class coming out of Massachusetts. Went to Virginia, didn't get a chance to play, was injured. Made a name for himself in the Big Ten at Rutgers. Third team all Big Ten selection last year. Opted to move for one final season of college baseball here in 2024. Newman's 2-2, lifted in the air to left, pushing Rodriguez back again, but he's got room this time. And on the track, he hauls it in for a loud out number two. Yeah, and Blake, we've seen early in this game already, the wind is going to be a factor. It's blowing out a little bit to left field. This is a routine fly ball, and it continues to take Rodriguez back, 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 and the next thing you know, his feet are on the warning track, and he catches it against the wall. So base is empty, two down. That brings in Justin LeBron, who takes up high. Flags are swirling all over the place at the ballpark today. It looks like it's blowing in, sometimes to left over here. The center field American flag is looking pretty dead right now, but obviously, you know, there is plenty of breeze up and in and around this ballpark. For your old timers that are my age, it's kind of like Candlestick Park or Wrigley Field. Newman gets the call outside corner, make it two and one to LeBron, the Alabama shortstop. Coming off his best SEC weekend so far, where he had five hits against the Gamecocks. Good shot by Newman to work it back to two and two. A lot of pitches up for Newman right now. Got to get down on those knees on a windy day like today. Jacob Newman trying to end this top of the first, the two two. On the ground up the middle, Anderson got there. His throw is late. An infield hit for LeBron. Good job here by Justin LeBron putting the ball in play with two strikes right back up the middle. Had a little too much mustard on it for Newman to get a glove on it. Anderson does a nice job of backhanding it, but his flip to first base is a little bit late because of LeBron's speed. And the Tide have a man on first with two outs. So today's starting pitcher, Cade Snell, will get a chance here in the first. He takes a changeup for a cold strike. LeBron four for four this year on stolen bases. Decent lead over at first for LeBron. He's running. Pitch is fouled off. Got a good jump then, did LeBron. Had a big lead and got a good jump. Will probably take this pitch off. But if it gets to one and two or is fouled off here by Snell, look for LeBron to take off again. Again, this is an Alabama team that's only stolen 20 bases this year. Only Florida and Georgia and the SEC have stolen fewer. That's ripped into center field. Aaron Walton is there, though. And he tracks it down to bring the tied first to a close. But not before Alabama strikes first. Ian Petrutz, his fourth home run of the year. Alabama's got the first two runs of the day. Was trying to replicate that here today. First pitch swinging to Garrett Staten on the ground to his counterparts. Gage Miller takes his time to put away Staten. One pitch, one out. Yeah, tough luck for Staten here with Gage Miller playing on the grass. He doesn't waste any time swinging the bat. The only problem with this is it doesn't give your team a chance to kind of see what Cade Snell has. But one pitch, one out here in the bottom of the first. So that brings in one of the best shortstops in the Southern Conference over the last couple of seasons. That's Garrett Howe. Takes the first pitch fastball at 90, but off the plate away. Howe, the senior from Decula, Georgia. Had just an obscene start at the plate. He leads the Southern Conference in hits and runs scored. He's second in the league in batting average and on base percentage. 
Hits this one hard, but right at the second baseman, Grant, who can take his time as well. And a couple of ground ball outs start the Sanford first. Yeah, Cade Snell wasting no time. He's attacking the strike zone. Knows he has a 2-0 lead. Howell's a good hitter, but he rolls over a breaking ball a little bit. Two down. So the base is clear. Two gone for John Anderson. He takes a fastball for a strike. Second year at Sanford for Anderson, the former transfer from Georgia Tech. And he hits that through the right side for a two out knock. This ball got in on John Anderson a little bit, but he's so strong that he's able to fight it off, hit it the other way through the four hole for a two out single. Here you see on the replay, hit them where they ain't. That's what they say to do, and that's what he did. John Anderson has almost as many hits as Garrett Howe's 42. That's hit number 38 for Anderson. Again, one of the top marks in the Southern Conference coming into the week. Extends the inning to Josh Rodriguez. He's trying to break out of a bit of a snide here. A senior from New Jersey. Trying to get things going again. Here to start the month of April. Big swing and a miss there. He's down 0-2. Yeah, took the first pitch fastball and then an off-speed pitch there and look for something out of the zone here. Snell going to try to make him chase. Snell looking for a strikeout to end the first. Instead misses inside. Numbers for Rodriguez good so far this year. An OPS over 900, but comes into the day two for his last 20 over the last six games. That includes 11 punch outs over that stretch. 1-2 lifted down the line and right. This is curling foul and a long run for Slights. Even with a slide, he couldn't quite get there. Yeah, Rodriguez's Achilles heel this year has been the strikeout, 26 strikeouts this year. Of course, a very good player. One of the postseason heroes last year for the Sanford Bulldogs, and sometimes you just got to hang with them. Fought off that offering. He'll live to see at least another one and two pitch here. Which Snell misses with downstairs. Rodriguez has seen it all now. So it's just a matter of trying to square one up. If you make a mistake with an off speed pitch to Rodriguez, sometimes he'll make you pay. Snell's 2 2. Off the plate. And it'll give John Anderson a free head start over at first. You're so right, Blake. And he's got to. Be careful with this left-handed pitcher because he hadn't seen a move yet. If you go too early, you can get zapped over there. Snell trying to bring this Sanford first to a close, but Josh Rodriguez making him work for it. The payoff pitch is a breaking ball popped up. Shallow center field. And McCants working his way in, makes the grab, and ends the inning. Two out knock from John Anderson, but nothing more than that for Sanford, and they're half to tie in the second. And he takes the first pitch fastball for a strike. Bottom third of the order, set to hit here for Alabama. Jacob Newman hoping for a little bit cleaner second after big swing from Ian Petrutz there in the top of the first. Good change up there. Newman gets the swing and miss. He's out front, a ball and two strikes. Yeah, that's his best pitch of the day so far, down and away change. One, two, breaking ball stayed up that time for Newman. Junior from nearby Vestavia Hills, Alabama. Newman was solid last week. The number's still inflated, though, from an outing early in the year. His first outing against UCF in Orlando did not record an out and was officially tagged with five earned runs. And all it takes is one of those types of outings to just wreck your ERA for a while. Good at bat from Hodo. He's worked it back full. Yeah, you don't want to go three balls in this situation, and you certainly don't want to walk the leadoff hitter two innings in a row. So we'll see how this 3-2 pitch unfolds. Payoff misses down and in, and for the second straight fame, the Crimson Tide have a leadoff base runner. 
80% of leadoff walk score. We saw that last inning. And had the man in the hole one and two, and this ball was down. And now Alabama's got the leadoff man on for the second inning in a row in this ball game. Brings in the catcher, Cameron Guangarena. Making just his seventh start of the year today. Hits this one a mile high into shallow right. Anderson going out, Bennett coming on. Bennett makes the catch. He had to run for forever to get that, but he got there for out number one. Well, at home you might be saying, why in the world is second baseman John Anderson not just going out there and just catching out in his back pocket? The wind is a factor. This would have been a can of corn for Bennett on a normal day, but it pushed it back into the infield. Wind continues to swirl here in the second as Max Grant gets ready to hit for the first time. Grant shows bunt, gets it down foul. Grant only eight at bats this year, only two hits. So hitting in a nine hole today. Transfer from Canisius. Getting the start at second base. Alabama's had a bit of a revolving door at second over the last few weeks. Bryce Evelyn dealing with a knock. It's opened up the door for Grant. He took advantage of the opportunity this past weekend. Got two starts against South Carolina. Hit a home run this past weekend. Sees his name back in the lineup card here on this Wednesday. 1-1 one, one from Newman is off the end of the bat into right field. Grant's got a hit. Hodo wants to go first for third, but throws on the brakes and almost got tagged out before getting back to second. Good job here by Grant of getting the pitch over the plate and getting the barrel out, pulling it. He knows he's got an open hole over there with Horowitz holding the runner on. He yanks it through that hole. Hodo came up too far around the bag a little bit, but was able to get him back in safely. So two on and one out, and back to the top of the order for Gage Miller. A chance for one of the best leadoff hitters in the SEC to do some pretty significant damage. Even out of the leadoff spot, Miller Leads this Alabama team with 36 driven in. He's hitting 533 with runners in scoring position so far this year. And he's out front, two balls and no strikes. Newman trying to entice Miller into a ground ball double play if possible. That'll be hard to do. He's a very good hitter. Big pitches here, high stress pitches for Newman. Misses downstairs. Wouldn't be surprised here to see head coach Rob Vaughn for the Tide turn Miller loose 3-0. Newman trying to get back in the strike zone. Does, and an excuse me swing there for Miller. Yeah, Miller's a terrific hitter, but you never want to check swing on 3-0, and he knows that. Miller had a green light, more of a yellow light swing. Still favors him on three and one. And he takes down and away, ball four. The Crimson Tide have loaded the bases with T.J. McCants coming to the plate. Yeah, and in this particular inning, and there is some activity in the Sanford bullpen, the single's one thing, but there's also been two walks in this inning. As you see the pitch down and away picked by Steele. But it's the freebies that come back and get you. A harmless single to right's not what comes back and gets you, but the two walks to go along. Trying to do some pretty significant damage early this afternoon. First pitch change up in there for a strike. If you're pitching here, and this is very, very, very hard to do, what you're trying to do is minimize damage. You want Alabama to score either one run or no runs. Big spot here, the tie trying to break it open early and Steele couldn't keep that close enough. Another run comes home. Hodo scores on the wild pitch. It's three nothing Crimson Tide. Yeah, this is an off speed pitch and Steele does not move his body to try to block the baseball. He just kind of flails at it and picks at it. 
and that's not what he needs to do. He needs to block the baseball, and that's going to lead to a man in and two guys moving up. It's now Grant at third, Miller at second. And McCants hits this on the ground to first. Horowitz takes it to the bag, and Grant got a late break at third, couldn't score. Yeah, and I think that's Grant's inexperience for not playing too much, Blake. This is a ball where Grant should have a nice secondary lead and should be sprinting to home plate here. Horowitz was back. Sanford catches a break, and Clevenger's got a chance if he can retire the next man to get in the dugout with that only one run scoring. Thought surely that was an RBI ground down for McCants. Instead, it's out number two. Petrutz lifts this pretty well into center, forces Aaron Walton back, but in front of the track, he makes the catch and brings the top of the second to a close. So a good job getting out of trouble by Heath Clevenger. Crimson Tide gets from the right side against the left-handed throwing Cade Snell. Switch hitting catcher from nearby Hoover, Alabama, trying to get his season going after a bit of a slower start than he would prefer. Reigning Southern Conference Freshman of the Year. Steal on the ground to short. Nice big hop for LeBron, who sets the feet and fires. Quite a few ground ball outs here early on for Cade Snell. Yeah, routine play for LeBron. It's short, just a two or three hopper bounded right up to him. As you see him looking at his card there. A couple of hops to LeBron. He's got a nice strong arm. Over to first for out one. So Steel retired without fanfare. That brings in Andrew Bennett. What a revelation this guy has been this year. The senior from Kennesaw, Georgia. He's turned himself in to one of the best bats in this Bulldog lineup this season. And a late, late strike call makes it nothing and two. Wow. Yeah, very late call by C.J. Burdett behind the plate, and he has called nothing low today before that. It's bitted in an 0-2 hole. Fights off that 0-2 offering. You know, on the mound, Cade Snell has made a habit of getting ahead with fastballs, and a lot of them are right down the chute. Sanford might want to consider ambushing some of those. Breaking ball just missed. Snell thought he had strike three. Yeah, that's a makeup call for sure. That's a strike. C.J. Burdett knew he missed the first one, and he would not admit that, but that's exactly what just happened, so it evened it up. The one-two off the fist. That is fair behind the third base bag. And a nice throw across by Miller for out number two. Very strong arms on the left side of this Crimson Tide diamond here. Two or three hopper to Gage Miller. Watch him backhanded. It did cross over the bag. And the nice throw across the diamond to Hodo retires Bennett. So base is empty. Two down for Cullen Horowitz. Former West Virginia Gatorade Player of the Year. Made his way down to Sanford after starting his college career at Army West Point, then San Jacinto Junior College. And a check swing results in an accidental foul ball. This happened to Sanford last week against Mississippi State, if you recall, Blake. A slow start. Bulldogs jumped out early 2-0, and Sanford had to claw their way back. Big hack and a miss there from Horowitz. Guy who's flashed some in-game power, but also struggled with strikeouts. 39% K rate coming in today, the highest on this team. Snell trying to put him away, looking for a clean bottom of the second. This is downstairs, look like left on right change up there. Well, I'm gonna tell you this, Cade Snell is pitching. A lot of good stuff tonight. That's hammered into center field, and for the second straight inning, Sanford's got a two-out hit. Good, good baseball by everybody all the way around here. It's two and two. Snell with a 3-0 lead, goes heater right down the chute. Horowitz jumps on it with his big, strong bat into center field, and that's a clean base hit and a strong base hit by Horowitz with two down. So that extends the inning to this guy, Aaron Walton. Sophomore takes the breaking ball off the plate away. 
How about the week Aaron Walton had last week? Three home runs, seven driven in, including a big home run in that Mississippi State game in this building. Big swing there, but an empty one. Yeah, if you're an outfielder and your name's Aaron, you better swing it, and boy, he's been swinging it. Good breaking ball there, catches the bottom of the zone from Snell. He's back out front. A lot of strikes from Snell, three pitches, command. Pretty good job so far. Horowitz, the runner at first, with two down, the one-two. Misses inside. Center fielder McCants is shallow because of his foot speed. 2-2 two -two pitch. Good job by Walton to fight off that curveball. Kate Snell's lived in the strike zone here early, still looking for his first punch out. It's two and two to the Sanford center fielder, Aaron Walton. On the ground off the end of the bat to short LeBron, goes the short way to end the Sanford threat. Second straight inning with a two out hit for the... Evan Slight steps in, ready to start the top of the third and a first pitch hack right at Garrett Howe at shorts. And one pitch, one out to start the frame. Good job here by Clevenger getting ahead in the count and Inducing a one hopper to Garrett Howe at short over to Horowitz. One pitch, one out here in the top of the third. So slight retired for the second time, albeit hard contact there. Brings in the Bama shortstop, Justin LeBron. That almost got a piece of LeBron, heads up. How good do you have to be to start as a true freshman at shortstop in the SEC? Justin LeBron has been a fixture in this Crimson Tide lineup court since he stepped on campus a few months back. That sounded like it got a piece of something. I thought it might have hit the hitter. I, yeah. I thought it hit that hitter or the bat. And, and home plate umpire C.J. Burdett put both hands up. It hit the bat, Blake. Watch him hit foul ball. So this one and one. Scoreboard says 2-0, and oh, but it's 1-1 one because one they hit the knob. Couple of pitches up and in here to start this plate appearance. Clevenger goes outside part of this time. That's off the end of the bat into right. And Andrew Bennett tracks it down for out number two. Good job here by Clevenger throwing strikes. The nature of pitching is if you throw strikes, a lot of times that's enough. This ball lifted high by LeBron into right field and gives Bennett a little bit of trouble, but he's able to haul it in for out two. So base is empty, two gone, and it brings in starting pitcher today, Cade Snell. Trying to extend an eight-game hitting streak. Snell, a two-way guy, of course, but is... Featured a little bit more with his bat than he has on the mound. So far, the early returns with the bat have been really good. 13 hits, his first 38 at-bats. Showed off some power as well this past weekend. And you got a chance to get in the dugout, one, two, three. You don't want to start losing your command here if you're Clevenger. Clevenger misses downstairs, 3-0. Walks have already been a problem in the game. Three already. Two of them have scored. Clevenger got the first two without much trouble. But he misses with four straight to Snell to give the Crimson Tide a two-out base runner. Yeah, Clevenger's a really good pitcher. But you don't want to go a four-pitch walk after out one, out two. Not really received. Great. Maybe close enough for a strike on 3-0. and We'll never know. So Snell aboard. Two down for Will Hodo. Hodo takes the first pitch changeup for strike one. Alabama 
the first baseman has started every contest but one this year for the Tide. Hits this one hard into right center field. Walton working over gets there. And that brings the Tide third to a close. Good work from Heath Clevenger. Pitches are the Crimson Tide 6 0. First pitch strike fired into Angelo Prieto, the freshman designated hitter. It's Prieto then back to the top of the Sanford batting order. Prieto pokes that through the right side. Third hit of the day for this Sanford offense, and the first time today they've had the leadoff man on. Nice job here by Prieto. Gets the ball away from him and waits, lets the ball travel and attacks. Hits it very hard to right field, and the Bulldogs have got something going here in the third. So one of their dynamic young outfielders is on. Back to the top of the order. Garrett Staten takes the first pitch this time. Now this is a situation where I think third baseman Gage Miller should not be even with the bag. I think he should be back a little bit because quite often Staten pulls the ball with authority. Staten shoots that one out of play. Garrett Staten, a guy who has some pop in his bat. A team high seven home runs after he hit 10 a year ago. So far, 15 of his 33 hits are for extra bases as Prieto is in without much fuss over at first. That's the first time we've seen Snell throw to first, and I believe he's got a better move than that. <laughs> Prieto, a guy who's run a little bit this year. Staten in the driver's seat, two and one. Look for him to look for something over the plate he can drive. Just got to be careful on a changeup. Two one popped up right side of the diamond. And Grant, the second baseman, takes charge and made it interesting, but made the catch in that swirling wind. Yeah, good at bat here by Staten. He got the count in his favor. He got a good pitch to hit, and he took a really good swing. He just got up underneath it a little bit, but a good at bat there. And the wind playing havoc today. You see Grant making the catch for out one. So Staten retired for the second time. That brings in Garrett Howe. Gonna check over on Prieto before Howe sees an offering here in his second plate appearance. That is that better move that we talked about, and it's because Prieto is eight for nine this year in stolen bags. And Prieto's running. First pitch breaking ball. The throw down is late. Prieto's got a ninth stolen base this year. Yeah, I think Cameron Juan Garena is going to want to come out of the crouch to throw here. I just don't think he's going to be able to throw out a man in that fashion off a knee, but Sanford's got a man on second with one out. Sanford as a team has been one of the most efficient base stealing teams in college baseball. That's now 45 stolen bases on 50 attempts. 45 steals to just five times caught. It's almost as good as you can ask for. 2-0 to Howe, catches the inside part of the plate. Corner infielders basically on the grass for Howe. He is a wonderful bunner, but that was on a 2-0 count, and they're still in. Um, could be interesting. Howe shoots that one foul. Sanford shortstop can certainly handle the bat, but he's also sporting a 1,200 OPS. Corner infielders back now with two strikes, especially Hodo at first, almost on the grass. Good job by Snell to work back in from 2-0 to 2-2. How spoils that one. Ordinarily here left on left, you'd look for Snell to drop a big time hammer away from Howe. Slider slurve type action away. Howe is very good at hitting the ball the other way. Another 2-2 coming here from Snell. And he almost hit him. Did he hit him? Yeah, he did. Just got a piece of Garrett Howe's jersey, and he's on. 
Big break here for Sanford Howell fighting against a good lefty. This one nicked his jersey. Home plate umpire C.J. Burdett. Not only did he see it, he also heard it. And that sends Howell to first. And now the Bulldogs have got something going here in the third with one out. Two on for John Anderson, one of the biggest power bats in the Southern Conference over the last couple of seasons. Sanford trying to get right back in this game in their half of the third. Snell misses up and away. Coach. Go ahead. Two on, one out, time called as Cade Snell's gonna get a visit on the mound. The Crimson Tide do have a couple of arms starting to get loose out in that go when he hit 22. He's got six already in this campaign. He takes a breaking ball that breaks in there for a strike. Also, if you're a base runner and the coach visits the mound and brings the whole infield in, always be heads up for some type of a pickoff. You don't want to ruin a rally by getting picked. Runners go on 1-1, one, one, and Anderson shoots it foul down the right side. Surprise, Sanford trying to put the game in motion a little bit there. Well, I'm not so sure they did. I think Prieto saw something and took off running because he thought he could take the bag. Hal did not go, and Anderson with a strike already on him swung the bat, so I'm not sure, so sure it was a play. Good job by Snell. After missing badly with his first, he's out front one, two, and he puts Anderson away. Big strikeout, the first of the day for Kate Snell. Yeah, this is one of the best pitches that Snell has thrown today. Change up down, you see it fade away from Anderson. Anderson a big swing, and that's gonna leave it up to Rodriguez. So here is Josh Rodriguez. And an inside move to second. Prieto would have been picked off with a good throw. Instead, it skips into center field, and both runners move up. One thing about left-handers is sometimes when everything's going groovy, something gets out of whack. They've got him picked, and it's a bad throw, and not a great cover, to be honest with you. LeBron trying to get there, but the bad throw to center puts guys at second and third with two down. Big spot here for Rodriguez now, who takes down it in. Very good take. Now, what you're going to see here is Howell on second base will get a gigantic read because Snell is in the windup, and he'll score easily on a single in the grass. Snell deals and finds the zone. Josh Rodriguez trying to break out of a two for 21 slump here. Remember the SoCon All Tournament team and the NCAA All Regional team a year ago? Looking for Sanford's third two out hit already today. And he ch checked his swing, held the hands back. It's two and one. Another element of this is Prieto is able to get a very large lead at third base because third baseman Miller is back. So on a wild pitch, he'd be able to scoot home. 2 1, change up, cut on and missed. Look for another one of those right here. Rodriguez did not look comfortable. Look for Snell to go down with the changeup, especially with the base open. Two men in scoring position for the Bulldogs. Snell trying to strand him there. And he gets Rodriguez. Bulldogs had two on and one out. Back-to-back -back strikeouts from Cade Snell to get out of trouble. First pitch to Guangarena is fouled away. Transfer from Coastal Carolina. Guangarena got his start at Cal State Fullerton. Of course, he's a California native. Went from one coast to the other and now in the SEC for his final season of college baseball. He's Clevenger thought he got the back door with that slider and steady missed. Sanford had to pull their starter early. Jacob Newman did not make it through the second. Since then, it's been Heath Clevenger, and EJ, he's done a good job filling up the zone, changing speeds. He's done a whale of a job. He's got a lot of fire. He's smart. That was a beautiful change up there, and the biggest part of this game so far was he was able to get in the dugout with just one run when he took over bases loaded, no outs. Another 1-2 changeup. That one off the plate. Now, you don't want to go 3-2 if you're Clevenger here. It's 2-2. Two two. 
You're down in the order. You want to make it happen. Big right-hander looking for his first strikeout today. Couldn't quite catch the outside part of the plate. Big pitch in the game here. You don't want to have the third leadoff walk of the game in the fourth inning. 3-2 to Cam Guangarena. He is off the plate, ball four. That's already five walks drawn by this Crimson Tide offense. Yeah, and Clevenger chose to stay with the changeup over and over and over again. Nobody on. Uh, guy hitting 222, not of a lot of at bats. Three straight changes, 2-2-3-2. Two, two, two. So that was the scouting report, but it is another leadoff walk. So another base runner early in an inning for the Crimson Tide as Max Grant is set to hit for the second time, and he pulls a bunt attempt back. Guangarin and not a threat to run over at first. Grant looking for his second hit already today. Takes another strike after showing bunts. Yeah, Grant's in the nine hole. He did have a single earlier, two balls that he could have easily bunted there, but chose to pull the bat back, and now he's in the hole 0 and 2. Tough spot here for Max Grant now, not bunting anymore. Lifts this pretty well into right, but Andrew Bennett had a bead and got there. And he comes up gunning to first. The throw is in time. Juan Guerin has doubled off on an absolute bullet from Andrew Bennett. Really nice play right here by Bennett. He catches Garan Arena snoozing a little bit. This ball's hit with authority by Grant. A little bit of a stumble by Bennett, but his momentum was bringing him back in. Nice stretch by Horowitz, two down. So that clears the bases. Back to the top of the order for Gage Miller. I'm not sure what Cam Guangarena was looking at there. He had a pretty clear view of Bennett making that catch right in front of him. Yeah, and he's like me. He's a slow catcher, so he needs to be hanging around the base, not drifting off too far, and you certainly got to sprint back. Miller fouls off that offering. He's quickly down nothing and two. And Clevenger's got a chance to put up another zero right here. Nothing and two to a really good hitter. Look for a steady diet of stuff away. Off speed, maybe some sliders. O2 slider hit in the air to center, but room out there for Aaron Walton. And he's got it. Just like that, the inning is state. Thought we might have some severe weather. Didn't end up being too terrible. So Lucas Steele takes a cold strike. One to get the Sanford fourth going. That's been the difference for Snell. He's got good, good stuff with all of his pitches, but the changeup has been the difference so far. Steal off the cap up the middle. LeBron working that direction, makes the play. Second time today, Lucas Steele has found Justin LeBron. This time he's out number one. Yeah, LeBron, a good player from the great state of Florida. Two hopper up the middle. His momentum taken in that way. You know, Steele is a catcher running. Just flips it over to first for out one. So that brings in Andrew Bennett. And Bennett hits that through the right side. He's got a base hit. One common theme on all these hits is that some right-handed hitters doing a good job of hitting the ball the other way. Several of these righties that have hit these singles the other way going right through the four hole. They're scratching where it itches. Snell's throwing the ball away from them. They're taking it that way. That's good hitting by Bennett. That extends Andrew Bennett's hitting streak to now 10 straight games. He's on in front of Cullen Horowitz. Takes the first pitch fastball at 89 on the gun for strike one. Yeah, and Snell continues to get ahead with his fastball. And then once he does that, then he reaches into his bag of tricks and starts doing all this off-speed stuff. Right on cue, went to the change up there, just missed with it. Four hits for Sanford so far against Cade Snell, but nothing with runners on base. Did Horowitz go on the appeal? He did not. 
He's so strong, Blake. He's so strong that his wrists wouldn't break. I mean, he's got forearms like Popeye. Watch this right here. Watch how strong he is to stop that swing. Not a lot of guys can do that. Horowitz takes up and away three balls and a strike. Tough thing here was the changeup being so good as you cannot sell out on the fastball. Here's the check swing. Can't sell out on the fastball here to change is too good. 3-1 off the cap down the line and trickling foul. This actually might even help Horowitz a little bit because he goes from a fastball count at 3-1 to a 3-2 count where he knows that Snell could throw anything. So it actually might keep him a little bit more restrained and reined in and he might wait a little bit longer for a potential off-speed pitch. See if Andrew Bennett's moving over at first with a payoff pitch owed to Horowitz. Okay, Snell thinking along those lines. And he's got a better move than that as we've seen, so Bennett's got to be careful. Decent lead at first, Bennett not moving, that's up and away. Snell loses his first Sanford hitter today. Bulldogs have two on for the second straight frame. You know, Blake, uh, as we're going to have another, we'll see the walk here up and away with the change. We're going to have another visit to the mound by Jason Jackson, the pitching coach for the Tide. But a guy that I played against in the minor leagues, Derek Cheater, I remember him being at. But for the second straight frame, they've got a run scoring opportunity. As Walton takes the call and strike one. Again, fastball, 0-0, oh, 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 1 Snell has worked from out front a bunch this afternoon. Walton on the ground to third. Nice stop by Miller to second for one. The turn is not in time. It was bang, bang at first. Walton just able to beat it out and keep this inning alive. Really nice job by the Alabama defense. You see Miller goes sidewinder over to Grant, flips to first. It's a good call at first base by Dustin Ragsdale. Walton beat it by an eyelash. And Sanford's got runners at the corners with two down. That brings to the nine spot the DH, Angelo Prieto. He's already got a hit the other way against Cade Snell. Takes the first pitch change up for a strike. You young kids out there, listen to me now. If you're on first base right here, don't get picked off. But if you do, stay in the rundown and let the guy on third have a chance to score. Prieto, a big swing, just barely got a piece. Prieto's hit back in the third, snapped an 0 for 13 he came in with. True freshman got off to a sterling start, was hitting over 400 the first month of the season. Looking for a big swing here with two on and two outs. Felt the hands back on that back foot slider. Look for Bennett at third base to get a big lead here. Snell being a lefty. In the stretch is back to Bennett. Third baseman Miller is deep. The one, two. Froze Prieto for a cold strike three. Big strikeouts in the third got Snell out of trouble. And another big strikeout gets him out of the fourth. Sanford is left. Bama, T.J. McCants. First man to greet Heath Clevenger. Clevenger lost the fastball up and away there. Clevenger has now worked against the this Alabama lineup. Two and two thirds out of the Sanford pen. He has surrendered two walks, but has not allowed a hit yet. T.J. McCants trying to change that. He's out front 2-0. Oh. Kants is going to be looking for something he can drive here. Two balls, no strikes. First count, home run hitter. Found straight back to the 2-1 to McCants. The transfer from Ole Miss. It starts last year for the Rebels. Came over to Alabama and has raked 88 total bases at the end of the week. That was in the SEC. 
by his standards. Had a chiller weekend, three for 13 against South Carolina, but two of those three hits were doubles as he drove in three. And he's still out front, three balls and a strike. McCann's in a great spot again. He goes from 2-0 to 3-1, a hitter's count. Going to be looking for something he can really explode on. 3-1, hit hard into right. Andrew Bennett, though, barely had to move. Really good at bat here by McCann's. Had a plan. Relax, gets in a hitter's count, attacks the baseball with authority. And it's one of them Adam balls because it was right at Andrew Bennett. And before Clevenger sees Ian Patrice for the second time, he's going to get a fresh wristband. And for you folks at home, if you're familiar with this technology, this is the James Bond watch. The catcher have them and pitchers and some other players, but this is signaled in by the pitching coach from the dugout, and it's going to be looked at on the wrist, almost like they're seeing what time it is. The catcher and the pitcher will look, and they'll both get the signal, and then they will throw the pitch. Quick checks all the way around. Make sure everybody's seeing it. Looks like we're good to go. As Petrut steps in for the third time. Biggest swing of this game so far belongs to the Crimson Tide left fielder. Ian Petrutz off the foul pole in left back in the first, a two-run home run. Gave the Crimson Tide the first runs of the day. They tacked on one more and inning later to get us to the score line we're at currently. If not for walks by the Sanford pitching staff, this would be a one-nothing game. Petrutz hit would have been off the foul pole, a solo shot, and then a couple of other walks led to their third run in the second. Clevenger finds the zone on 2-0. and For Ian Petrutz, after that home run in the first, he has now reached safely in 17 straight games. He's hit safely and now six straight. And hammers that one way foul. So you young pitchers out there, after you give up a ball that's hit that far foul, best pitch you can throw now is your changeup. But the thing is, you got to keep it down and away in the strike zone. You don't want to go full count. Clevenger 2-2 is off speed and on the ground. Garrett Staten has to hurry, but he makes a good strong throw across and gets Petrutz for out number two. This is where the upperclassman Staten knows the scouting report. He knows Petrutz is slow afoot, so he lays back on this ball, does not shuffle, and fires to a stretched out Horowitz for out two. Again, Heath Clevenger starts an inning with a couple outs in a row. In front of Evan Slight. First pitch to Slight is on the ground right side, off the glove of Horowitz and into right field. And the Alabama captain Slight has a two out hit. Slight ambushes a fastball on the first pitch. Hit well, Horowitz gives a good effort, but it ricochets off of his first baseman's mitt out into right field and the Tide have a two out knock here in the fifth. For Alabama, it is their first hit since the second inning. First hit off Heath Clevenger as he misses upstairs to Justin LeBron. Clevenger has stemmed the tide, so to speak, since he's come into the ball game. He's trying to put up yet another zero this inning to give his offense a chance to get a big hit. LeBron trying to keep this frame going, looking for the third two-out hit of the day for Alabama. Pulls a bunt attempt back. Yeah, and I think that's a fake bunt take. I, I don't think that LeBron is bunting there. Again, this game, the walks have been the difference. It'd be one nothing on a solo shot with no walks, but it's three nothing tied in the fifth. Big cunt, but LeBron couldn't connect. This will be a double whammy for Clevenger, if he could retire LeBron, who's four for four stolen bases. 
If he could get him out, he gets him out of the way and gets in the dugout at the same time. On the ground up the middle, Garrett Howe kept it on the infield, but his flip is just a little late. And that should be an infield hit for LeBron. Nice job by Howe. Smoking's a bad habit. Diving's a good habit. He dives, tries to flip it to Anderson. A little bit late, but a wonderful play by the shortstop for the Bulldogs. And that's going to prompt a visit to the mound. It's Mississippi State last Tuesday. Trying to get Kate Snell here with two on and two outs. The Alabama pitcher, a chance to help himself score Alabama's first run since the second. Big breaking ball misses up and in. Another lefty on deck. Don't have to give in to Snell. Bottom part of the order for the Crimson Tide full of left-handed hitters. A Steckmesser finds the corner that time. He can go with whatever he wants here. Probably going to go hard stuff. Either a hard breaking ball or his fastball. Can do either one. Going to have to stay away. Steckmesser, a quick check at second base. Uses his one disengagement without a throw. Got a shift on in the infield. You got three infielders to the right of second base with how the shortstop slid over a little bit to the right of second base. 2-1 off the glove of Steele. Yeah, and I, I'm going to tell you, Blake, this is a terrific pitch. I don't know if we'll see the replay here. This is definitely... This is definitely going to be called a strike here if it's caught, C.J. Burdett. But when it's not caught, it's just not going to be called a strike in that situation. 3-1 downstairs, and that loads the bases. Yeah, and not to, not to belabor the point on one pitch, but that changed the entire at bat. You go left on left, you make a pitch. It would have been 2-2. That's the low one for ball four. Would have been 2-2 and would have set up the curve ball. When it goes 3-1, you got to go fastball, and now the bases are loaded. So here's Will Hodo with a chance to break this game open. What a weekend Hodo had. Five hits, two home runs, and a double against South Carolina in Tuscaloosa. Trying to build on that here in the midweek. Get off speed there, evens it up one and one. This is the biggest pitch of the inning. It's one of the biggest pitches of the game. It's one and one. If it goes 2-1, it goes one direction. One and two, it goes another direction. Curveball just off the plate. Two balls and a strike to the Crimson Tide first baseman. And that puts Hodo in the driver's seat. He's seen everything Steck Messer has, so we'll see how it unfolds. Good spot, outside part of the plate to work it back two and two. This has got to be a breaking ball, down and away lefty, nipping at that outside corner with a hook. A 2-2 two -two. on the ground right side. Horowitz couldn't keep it in front. It skips into right. Slate scores. Here comes LeBron, the throw to third, not in time to get Snell. Two driven in, make it 5 nothing, Alabama. Board says 4 0, but like Blake told you, it's 5 0 tied. Cam Guan Garena takes the call to strike one. We're still waiting on an official score, whether that's going to go as a hit or an error. First things first, Hodo almost picked off. Sanford almost wiggled off the hook. We're not able to. And now it's Busted open 5-0 and a tide looking for more. Guangarina hits this hard down the right field line and foul. Missed extra bases and a couple more runs driven in by maybe six or seven feet. As it stands right now, that has scored a two RBI single for Will Hodo. 
He's at first, the other man at third, the 0-2 off the plate away. Yeah, and I agree with that uh, scoring. Uh, rule book says anything that cannot be fielded with routine effort is a base hit. That certainly was not routine effort for Horowitz, and that's a single. 1-2 on the ground right side. Anderson charging, scoops, flips, and just gets Quangarena to end the Alabama fifth. But not before the Crimson Tide pushed a couple of runs across. A big two-out hit from Will. Top of this Bulldogs lineup to start the bottom of the fifth, Garrett Staten. First pitch swinging on the ground up the middle into center field. And Sanford's got a leadoff base runner just like that. Nice job by Staten being ready to hit. Right back up the middle. Colson Buchanan greeted rudely with his first pitch of the ball game. Sanford trying to get two or three, get back in it. So Staten on for the first time today in front of his left side of the infield counterparts. That's Garrett Howe who steps in. Howe takes the first pitch fastball upstairs. Colson Buchanan has been excellent the last few times out of the Crimson Tide bullpen. Has not given up an earned run over his last four outings. As that got to the screen off the glove of Guangarena. It was up, but not that up. Yeah, you know, I say this all the time when we're on the air, but your job description is catcher. And that means you're supposed to catch it. So you young catchers, try to catch them all. Game, bullpen, warming up, scrimmages. Try to catch them all, guys. 390 feet for Staten, who's now in scoring position. And Howe is out front 3-0. and oh. Might want to take two here if you're Howe. Cannon, not a guy that walks a ton of people. 16 innings of work. He's walked just four. Finds the zone there to make it three balls and a strike. Sometimes when you have a new pitcher come in, when another guy's been kind of having his way with you, that's kind of what you want if you're a Sanford Bulldog tonight. Still a hitter's count here for Hal, who takes way outside ball four, and the first two Bulldogs have reached here in the fifth. Good job by Hal, four-pitch walk, and... This kind of makes the two runs Alabama scored in the top of the inning loom large because instead of being up 3-0, first and second no outs, now it's 5-0. So Sanford's got to break out the heavy lumber. This is a guy with plenty in his bat. John Anderson, a chance to do damage. Anderson's slugging percentage over 700 coming into the week. OPS over 1,200. Anderson takes a fastball that's right there. If you're Alabama, you got to have your bullpen ready. You can't wait until this thing gets to be 5-3, to three, bing, bang, bong. And I see a couple of guys stretching, moving around out there. Nobody throwing yet, but if you're Alabama, you got to have your pin ready. Anderson chops that one foul. Colson Buchanan threw against Samford on Friday night when these two teams met in Spartanburg last year. He went eight innings as a starter, gave up three runs on five hits, struck out seven, and lost to Jacob Cravey's complete game. Trying to put away John Anderson here on one and two. Anderson fights it off. He'll live to see at least another one. Kind of an interesting play two pitches ago. The foul ball ended up about five feet in front of the hitter, the catcher, and the umpire. And one of Alabama's managers had to run all the way out there to get it. Buchanan, another one, too. That's downstairs. By the way, in that game, Buchanan threw for Watford against Sanford. John Anderson, one for four. With the strikeouts, that one hit. That's a big extra base hit, a double. One of three Sanford had that day. The 2-2 two -two is on the ground foul. Like Blake told you, no secrets here between Buchanan and Anderson. Sanford hunting a big hit. They've had several singles today. 
They're hunting a big one to try to get back in the game. Another 2-2 forthcoming. And Anderson pokes it into left field. That'll get down in front of Petrutz. Staten got a good read. He will score without a play. It's an RBI single for John Anderson. And Sanford strikes back to make it a four-run game. Great at bat by Anderson. Waited until he got his pitch. He gets it. He hammers it to left field. Petrutz lays back on it a little bit. Staten's flying all the way. Waved home by third base coach Cam Shepard without a throw home. And that's going to take Cameron Longarena to the mound. Nobody is throwing yet in the Alabama bullpen. A couple guys kind of stretching a little bit, kind of a, kind of like an old hound dog stretching on the porch. But nobody's throwing yet. And, you know, you, you have something happen like this guy hit the ball at the by, ballpark, it'll be five to four. Josh Rodriguez certainly has home run pop. First three Sanford hitters have reached here in the fifth. Rodriguez couldn't quite pull the trigger on a first pitch fastball. Yeah, and if you're Rodriguez, you, you can't worry if the mule's blind. You just got to load the wagon. You got to turn it loose. You got to get a strike and turn it loose. Rodriguez on the ground. That sneaks through. How gets the wave around third. He will score. It's back to back RBI hits. As that throw gets away, Guangarana can't prevent Anderson from moving to third. And all of a sudden, we've got a three-run game. Yeah, sometimes when you're in a slump, two for 22, two for 23, you just say, to heck with it, I'm swinging it. The ball found a hole, and this is a poor play by Alabama defensively. Not a great throw. Nobody kind of looking around for it, not sure where the ball was being thrown. And it squirts for because you still got four innings left. Reigning Southern Conference Freshman of the Year represents the potential tying run. A check on Rodriguez to keep him close. Sanford had not had a hit with runners on base all game until this inning. First four Sanford hitters have reached here. Lucas Steele at the plate trying to keep the line moving. Alabama finally has got a guy throw into a standing catcher in the bullpen. Trying to get a guy hot. Steele 0 for 3 with two punch outs against Buchanan. But he's out front, two balls and no strikes. Might not be a bad idea to take one. Anderson at third, Rodriguez at first. A tough go for Colson Buchanan so far out of the Crimson Tide bullpen. And Steele couldn't hold the hands back on a high fastball. As I said earlier, sometimes a new pitcher coming in when the other guy's been tying you in knots is just what you want. Sanford's got a chance to get more. Two one popped up. Foul ground, but playable. LeBron and Miller both giving it a look, and neither's going to get there. Really good job by both Sanford base runners. Always tag on obvious foul balls. Both of those guys, if that ball was going to be caught by Gage Miller, if Miller catches that over his shoulder like Willie Mays, both of these guys would have moved up a base, and that would have scored another run for Sanford. That was a long, long run. At Alabama's Park, that is way into the seats, but it was playable here. From 2-0 to 2-2, two two, Buchanan. Can't put away Steele with that offering. We'll do it again. And Steele's got to find a way to put the ball in play. Um, been struggling of late, but he's got to find a way to put the ball in play and make this thing 5-3. to three. 2 one, nobody out, another 2-2. Two -two. Steele pops it up. Guangarena, Miller in front of the Crimson Tide dugout. Miller makes the catch for a huge out number one. Ball popped up here right in front of the Bama dugout. Gage Miller gets up underneath it. His teammates helping him, telling him he's got room. Catches it with two hands for out one, and Sanford needs a big at bat by Bennett, and Alabama's hunting a double play. Here is Andrew Bennett. Takes up and away. 
A couple of weeks ago, Bennett was the Southern Conference Player of the Week. He has already extended his hitting streak today to 10 games in a row now. 16 hits over that 10 game span, including today. And he hammers this into the right center field alley. This will get down and score Anderson. Bennett stops it first. He's got an RBI single. We've got a two run game. Great job here by Andrew Bennett, looking to go the other way like he did earlier in the ball game. Gets the ball over the plate, extends his arm, hit his arms and hits it in the right center field gap. Nice job by Slight of cutting it off. Moves Rodriguez to third and makes it five to three. And Sanford is one big hit from making it five four. And that's gonna be all for the brand new pitcher, Colson Buchanan for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Not the outing Colson Buchanan was looking for out of the tide bullpen. Yeah, that's a slider, and he's going to see some more of them, too. So he might want to start talking about going two strikes right now, going the other way. Alabama looking for a strikeout or a double play. Moza misses. What a job by Guangarena to keep it close. Bennett takes second base, but Rodriguez not able to score from third. Obviously, the more important runner. I mean, Great. what a backhand this is. Great play. Fantastic play by Ron Garania. Bennett moves up. Sanford's got the tying runs on. Tying run in scoring position now. Horowitz slices that one out of play. It's going to be a steady diet of sliders. That's what we got coming up right here. Horowitz got to choke up. Got to think about going the other way. Rodriguez at third. Got a chance to score on a wild pitch. Longerina working with Aiden Moza now. Looking for a punch out on one and two. Another nice backhand on a slider in the dirt. Bennett could get more at second base. They're not even paying him any attention. Shortstop LeBron, second baseman Grant, not even close to Bennett. But the outfielders are deep except for right field. He'll probably score on a single in the grass anyway. 2-2 two -two fought off. Yeah, and those are two pitches that Horowitz wants back. Horowitz a good hitter, but Moses got a good slider in his back pocket. Those are two fastballs he fouls straight back. Another 2-2 offering. Cut on and missed. A big strikeout for Aiden Moza. Yeah, Horowitz had a couple pitches to hit. Fouled him straight back. This is the best pitch Moza threw so far. A nice hammer for out two. Big, big pitch out of the bullpen. Horowitz down on strikes, retired for the first time today. Two on, two out for Aaron Walton. Fastball did not miss by much at 92 miles an hour. Got to be ready at third if you're Rodriguez. Slider in the dirt. Alabama's been fortunate a couple times. It might squirt by next time. Slider finds the zone, one and one to Walton. He's hit a couple of ground balls so far today. One to short, one to third. Sanford center fielder hitting 385 so far this year with runners in scoring position. How's that one off? He's down a ball and two strikes. Get ready. You're about to see some hammers, hammers, hammers right here. Moza trying to get the Crimson Tide out of a jam with the lead intact. A one two pitch. Walton shoots it into center. McCants coming on, will get there. And one center fielder flies to the other to bring the one for two at the plate today. Mason Swinney hits for the first time and wastes no time swinging the bat as he fouls that one out of play. Evan Steckmesser back to work on the mound for Sanford after he got them out of the top of the fifth. He's out front of Swinney, nothing at two. Important for Steckmesser to hold Alabama right here and get his Bulldogs in the dugout. If you're Alabama, you want to get some of those runs back. 0-2 pitch, didn't miss by much, goodness. 
Like Bob Euchre said, just a bit outside. Steckmesser trying to put him away, couldn't that time. A two and two to Mason Swinney from Bill Campbell, Alabama. Population 992. They're hunting eight more people to move in there where they can get to 1,000. Another 2-2 two -two breaking ball, that one downstairs. And good job by Swinney from 0-2 to 3-2 and two here. Again, guy cold off the bench. You do not want to walk the leadoff hitter after your team just got a three spot. 3-2, three, just missed outside ball four, and Alabama's got a leadoff base runner. Yeah, nibbling a little bit too much here. Nibbling too much. Guy coming cold off the bench. So Alabama has got a really good hitter coming up with a man on first here in the sixth. That is now seven walks that have been issued by this Sanford pitching staff so far today. Back to the top of the order, Gage Miller. Hits this high and deep into left field. Rod's going back. He's out of room. This is gone. The 12th home run already this year for Gage Miller in the Crimson Tide. Get two runs back just like that. Really good job here by Gage Miller. It's a hanging breaking ball, hits it out of the ballpark. He leads this ball club for Alabama in home runs this year. That's his 12th long ball of the year. And the walk ahead of it makes it a two run shot. And just like that, with one swing of the bat, after Sanford scored three in the bottom of the fifth, Alabama scores two with no outs here in the top of the sixth to take a 7 3 lead. First time since the Georgia series. Gage Miller leaves the yard. And the Crimson Tide pick up some big insurance runs after McCants just got a piece of that. And that really deflates you, Blake, when you've been working all game to try to get back in the game. You finally get back in at 5-3. to three. You think you're back in it. And then bing, bang, bong, they get two. And it makes it 7-3. to three. But there's a lot of ball game left, and you just got to keep swinging it. Cantz quickly in an 0-2 hole. His first look against Evan Steckmesser. Make it one and two. Rare hitless day so far for TJ McCants. Who lifts this breaking ball high and deep into left center field. Walton can only watch. This one's out of here too. Gage Miller and TJ McCants go back to back to start the sixth, and it's 8-3 Alabama. Yeah, another pitch by Steckmesser that he didn't get exactly where he wanted to get, stayed up on one and two. Wind blowing out a little bit, and the two guys that lead this club in homers hit balls out of the ballpark, and now they're tied again. They both have a dozen apiece, and Alabama has gotten back the three runs they gave up in the bottom of the fifth, it's now 8-3. Big swings from the two biggest bats in this Crimson Tide lineup. And that might be all for Evan Steckmesser here. Titter Thompson will face as Ian Petrutz, who's already left the yard, all the way back in the first off the left field foul pole. About as opposite field a home run as you're ever going to find. First pitch misses from Thompson to the Crimson Tide left fielder. Gage Miller and TJ McCants making their presence felt here in the top of the sixth. Biggest bats of this Alabama lineup card doing some damage. So far it's been an eight run on eight hit day for the Crimson Tide. Thompson's 2-0, a big swing and a miss there from Petra. 91 right there from Thompson. He is a high-velocity guy. When he's throwing strikes, he's very good. Sometimes he struggles with command, but when he's around the zone, he's tough to hit. Thompson, one of the most used arms out of the Sanford bullpen a year ago. Made 24 appearances, 38 innings of work. That guy on the phone right there. And when he saw that ball coming, you see him on the phone right behind the pitcher with the camouflage hat. He ducked down quick when he saw that bullet coming at him. Got a 
be paying attention here. Foul ground. My dad always said, Blake, they only play with one ball. There he is. Look at that. Whoa. He said, he said hold on. Hold on a minute. Hold my calls. Better watch out down there. The payoff pitch on the way. That's up high. Ball four. And Petrutz is on for the second time in this one. Yeah, my dad always said they only play with one ball. All you got to do is watch that ball. But yet another walk issued by the Sanford pitching staff. And with no outs, the Tide has another man on first base. So that brings in Evan Slight. He's got one of the eight Alabama hits today. In fact, the only starter without a hit to this point is Justin LeBron. Slight takes a fastball right there on the outside part of the plate. A big swing and a miss. Thompson out front 0-2. Really good change right there by Turner Thompson. Same arm speed as the fastball, and it fooled Slight. I think a lot of people wish their changeup was 87. It's a lot of people's fastball. Thompson capable of running it up to 93, 94, 95. Yeah, it's amazing how some of these big league guys, you know, and Araldis Chapman type guys change up 94. Thompson looking to put away Evan Slight here. Still way out front. Got it off the fist. Back to him. Went to second for one. The turn is in time. One, six, three. The Bulldogs roll a pair. Really nice play here by the Sanford defense, especially Thompson. He uses two hands to gobble it up, and he takes a split second to make sure his feet are set. He hits Howe in the chest. Howe flips it over to Horowitz, who digs it out for the twin killing. Nice play by the dogs. Credit to Thompson, who looked like he decided to go to second base at the very last moment. Base is empty, two down, Justin LeBron. Tips that one into the mid of Lucas Steele for strike one. By the way, I said LeBron was hitless. He's got multiple hits today. Snell, the only regular without a hit to this point for the Crimson side. That bounced in front of home plate, took a piece out of the thigh of Lucas Steele. Yeah, that one didn't feel real good. Probably would have been nice to see C.J. Burdett maybe walk halfway to the mound and flip a new ball to Thompson. But Awkward, a sword-like swing there from LeBron to make it one and two. Yeah, it's never been a question of stuff with Thompson. He has wonderful stuff, competes hard. When it's around the strike zone, it is tough to hit. Thompson one pitch away from getting out of this top of the sixth. But first things first, LeBron's going to use his one timeout. Look for him to try to blow him up with the heat here, Blake. Thompson can run it up there when he wants. With the hammer instead, it missed down low. Good pitch there. Now when you get the situation with Thompson, nobody on, great heater. Now it's time to come with the cheese. For the stretch, Thompson's 2-2. Popped up over the top of the Sanford dugout. Horowitz giving it a look, but nothing more than that. And see the temptation here is to go away from it. Yeah, he fouled it off. The temptation is to go away from the fastball. No, you have a guy that sometimes struggles with command. There's nobody on base. It's not like you got second and third one out. Attack with the fastball here. Another 2-2 owed from Thompson. It's downstairs. Yeah, and see what that does is that now you're in a full count and now no, now you got to throw a strike, and you know the heat's coming when you're three and two. Thompson deals. That's hit into left field. That's going to fall in for a hit. Rodriguez over to cut it off. LeBron digging for second, and he'll be in there with a two-out double. 
Nice job here by the shortstop for Alabama, Justin LeBron. He gets a fastball up on three and two. He gets the barrel out, hits it with authority down the left field line, and with his foot speed, he's absolutely going to make it into second base for a double, and Alabama is still threatening here in the sixth. Justin LeBron just continues to see it well. Kate Snell digs in, takes the first pitch upstairs. Snell taken out of the game as the pitcher, but stays in the game as the Crimson Tide's designated hitter. Just barely got a piece of that, tipped it into the mitt. Yeah, Alabama did their lineup today just like the old days in the National League when you didn't have a designated hitter, just like when you were watching the Braves. Nine guys. One one on the outside part of the plate. Look for Steele, excuse me, look for Thompson to throw something nasty here down. Steele's gonna have to block it. Was down, but off the plate as well. Snell's been on base twice. in this contest. I'd love to see at least oh. Thompson's got to make sure he comes set. He almost bounced there. He wouldn't want to get a balk in this situation. Another 2-2. Two -two. Again, Snell does enough to stay alive. Great day for Cade Snell on the mound. Trying to get it done with the bat, and he does. Into right field, another two-out hit. LeBron scores easily from second, and Cade Snell adds on to this Crimson Tide advantage. And that brings Tony David out of the mound quickly, out to the mound quickly. And he is... He's passionate about something. Something has, I oh know. Coach David is passionate about something he can't. And the inning continues. Chance for Will Hodo. Hodo, a two RBI hit his last time up back in the fifth. Pitch there from Thompson to make it a ball and a strike. Crimson Tide have done damage here in the top of the sixth. Hodo, the eighth Alabama hitter in this inning. Yeah, it looked like Sanford, after they cut it to 5-3, was threatening to claw back into this thing, and now back to a six-run lead for the Tide. Three balls and a strike to Hodo, who's already drawn one walk today. Thompson, 3-1. Fouled off of Hodo's front foot. That one's going to sting. No armor or anything on that foot for Hodo, just the elbow guard. So three balls, two strikes, two outs. Snell will be running it first and will score on a double. Can Thompson finally get Sanford out of this Alabama sixth? The 3 2 pitch is chopped on the ground to first. Torowitz to the bag himself. And finally, the Crimson Tide are done, but not before Alabama sends eight to the plate. They score four runs on four hits, including back-to-back. -back Bottom of the sixth here, for the Sanford Bulldogs, and a big swing and a miss from Cade Carr, who is pinch hitting for Angelo Prieto in the nine spot. So Carr, the new hitter for the Bulldogs. He's quickly down nothing and two. Up, 
Freshman and Hoover with already 10 hits to his credit, but he's down on three pitches. Moza, his second punch out today. Yeah, that's a tough pinch hit appearance for Carr sitting on the bench cold. Comes in against a high level guy with a great slider and just not able to foul it off there or put it in play. And that's out one here in the bottom of the sixth. One gone back to the top of the order. Garrett Staten, the hitter. Staten one for three so far in this one. Had a hit his last time up back in Sanford's three run fifth. Got that frame started for this Bulldog offense. Fred Scher Jr. from Gainesville, Georgia. He's played a lot of baseball since coming on the Sanford campus. A couple of empty hacks there though. He's now one and two. Alabama's got this right where they want it. They got their bullpen set up. They have a six run lead. They're only hunting about 10, 11 more outs, and they got some high-level guys that could use a little work in the pen. Staten chops that foul. He stays alive as the breeze starts to pick up. When you get to this kind of lead late in the game, just playing the game right, you can sometimes win. You've got enough runs to win, throwing strikes, making defensive plays. Sometimes that's enough. Staten wears that fastball 94 miles an hour, and it got a piece of him. Yeah, and that's exactly what you don't want to do if you're Alabama. And we hope that this hit the armor on this elbow. I think it did. Yeah, it hit that armor right there on that elbow. And back in the old days, that one would have hurt pretty bad. You have some ice on it on the bus or back at the dorm. But with this, uh, ar this armor stuff they wear nowadays, that just kind of ricochets off and you head to first. Fourth time this year, Garrett Staten's been hit by a pitch. He's on in front of Garrett Howe. Howe takes a fastball off the plate away. Again, 94 miles an hour for Moza. Going to be tough for Sanford to do this, but they got to start putting up some crooked numbers, two here, three there, try to get back in. It's going to be hard against this back end of this pitching staff. How lifts that pretty well into left field. Petrut's going back to the wall. That is off the top of the wall. How on his way to second. He'll stop there. Staten scores all the way from first. It's an RBI double for Garrett Howe. Alabama's outfielders, Blake, they kind of flip the ball back in. They don't really throw it back in. They kind of flip it back in. This ball's hit like a bullet by Howe off of the left center field wall. It squirts over to the center fielder McCants. He kind of flips it in. And then a throw is made by, I believe, LeBron toward home plate, but Sanford tacks on a fourth run. They're down 9-4. So the Bulldogs on the board, John Anderson. First pitch hack, he chops that one foul. And see if you get this run in, Blake, you still have a little bit of hope. Yes, it's 9-5, but it's only the six. You got three more times up. You got some home run hitters. The ball's flying out of here. You never know if you start putting up a couple crooked numbers. What a backhand. Juan Garena somehow snared that on a hop. Yeah, really, really nice hands here by Juan Garena. This was a tough slider to even stop, much less catch. He catches the baseball, and that's a big play because it keeps Howe on second base and doesn't let him to advance to third. All in a strike to Anderson, who hammers this down the line. That is just foul. Nice job by Anderson getting a hard fastball and turning and burning on it. And you want that to land fair if you're a right-handed hitter because what he's going to get now is a steady diet of these tough sliders. And it's going to be hard because you're in that spin mode and you got that heat, and now you're going to get some sliders away from you. One, two is a slider. Anderson did a good job to lay off of. Hal's got to be ready at second because even though Guardarina is doing a great job behind home plate. One could squirt away. Sean Anderson looking for his third hit today. His second RBI hit in this one. 
Hits this one hard, that'll get through. Petrutz comes up with it, Howe gets the wave around third. The relay won't be made. It's back-to-back -back RBI hits for the Bulldogs here in the sixth. Cam Shepard, the third base coach for Sanford, doing a really good job after a wonderful job by Anderson getting a hit. Shepard realizes these outfielders don't throw all that well. And so even though they've got their momentum coming to home plate, and even though the ball is hit well on a flat golf course type outfield, he's sending these guys because they can run and Alabama's outfielders don't have plus arms. Time called here as Guangarin is going to go meet with Aiden Moza. Back-to-back -back RBI knocks from Garrett Howe and John Anderson. What a day Anderson's had. Three hits, two runs driven in. And if you're Alabama right here, Blake, you got to be careful because Rodriguez, a guy that can hit the ball at the ballpark at any time, got three homers this year. You make a mistake to Rodriguez here, and he hits the ball at the ballpark, and we've seen the ball get up in the jet stream today. It'll be 9-7, to seven and you got a ball game again. So it ain't even close to being over. Bottom of the six, only one out. Down the line bullpens. So you never know what's going to happen. Rodriguez, an RBI hit just an inning ago. Big swing and a miss there. Sanford left fielder hit a dozen home runs last year, including home runs in the last seven consecutive weekends. Good pitches from Moza. He's quickly out front, nothing in two. Yeah, he just wants to put it in play, he does Rodriguez, like he did last time on the ground, try to fly. Moses is going to try to put him away with something nasty. And Moza gets him to chase. Throw down to second is just a bit off target. Otherwise, Crimson Tide had a chance to strike him out, throw him out. Anderson and, wasn't yeah. going, but he read the ball in the dirt. Yeah, and he must have seen he had a much better angle than we did. At first, I thought he should have thought he should have slid, but then he's got a different angle. I, I think the middle infielder was way off the base to the point where he didn't have to. So Rodriguez down on strikes, man in scoring position, two outs for Lucas Steele. Just a bit downstairs at 93. Big run at second base, three run deficit is a different planet than a four-run deficit. Sanford's got 10 hits, just like the Tide today. Wave and a miss there from Steele, who's trying to come up with the third two-out hit of the game for Sanford. Crimson Tide with six two-out hits in this contest. Steele out front again. It's one and two. Yeah, they're going to stay away from steel, and they're probably going to stay with the off speed, maybe a backdoor slide or something like that. Mosa trying to get out of this sixth with just those two Samford runs crossing. The one-two. Steele got to be. Different crowd than last week. The Mississippi State game was bonkers, like a wrestling match. People hollering every pitch, going bananas. Here, it's like everybody's kind of waiting on the bus. Another one-two from Moza. Steele again, fights it off. Yeah, that's a mistake by Moza, and he lives to tell the tale. Fastball elevated, 91. Great swing by Steele, fouled it straight back. Look for the breaking ball away here, maybe even in the dirt. Anderson, the man at second. Steele pops this up. Third base side. Does Miller have a play? No. Gets over the top of the Crimson Tide dugout. Right fielder slight is shallow, as is center fielder McCants. Another one, two in the dirt, and Anderson moves up 90 feet. Now, if you're Anderson right here, you got to be looking for another one because he's thrown so many. And Juan Garina has been Houdini today. 
but you just can't stop every single one of these really, really tough sliders. So if you're Anderson at third, you got to be looking for another one. The 2-2 pitch. Steele again spoils a pretty good offering. Lucas Steele not going down without a fight. He's been the unluckiest hitter in this Sanford lineup so far this year. His batting average just 182 on balls put in play. But he's down on strikes. Moza finally gets him. And the inning is over. Anderson left at third, but he supplies one of the two RBI. Just now really getting clearance to throw in games. So he appears here in the top of the seventh. First pitch misses inside to Cam Juan Garena. And a check swing sends that almost into the Alabama dugout. I hope that didn't hit a kid that went right over the Alabama dugout in a kind of a weird way. They're playing some catch over there. Hope that didn't hit anybody. 1-1 one, one tipped into the mitts. 86 miles an hour that time from Whitney. Alabama catcher's been on base once today. That came back in the fourth. Chops that one foul. You'll see another one and two. Sanford looking to put up a zero, maybe get a couple in the bottom of the seventh. Gives you more hope. Alabama wanting some insurance runs right now. Whitney lost the one, too. Heads up. Breaking ball slipped out of his hands. Hadn't thrown much lately. Trying to get back in the groove. Look for him to go back to the 2-2 two -two heater right here. Just a little downstairs with that heater. Full count. Trying to ease Whitney back into some pitching. Only his second appearance of the year. Crimson Tide have had a few leadoff walks today. Instead, this is hammered into right field. A leadoff hit starts the top of the seventh. Cameron Wangarin has got his first hit of the afternoon. Yeah, Wangarin knew he was going to get a fastball, and he jumped on it. Turned and burned. Ball's hit well to right field. Bennett cuts it off. Gets it in in a hurry. Knows he's got a catcher running. Holds him to a long single. The 11th hit of the game for this Crimson Tide offense. Brings in Mason Swinney. Swinney takes a little bit down low. Everybody in this Crimson Tide lineup today with at least one hit. It's an Alabama offense that has come to life, especially over the last couple of frames. Six of their nine runs have come between the fifth and the sixth. Now we've had 11 runs score between these two clubs in the previous two innings combined. Whitney's 1-1 is hit in the air to shallow center. Aaron Walton got a late break, now coming in and makes the grab. Really good job there by Andrew Bennett playing right field. He understands this wind's playing tricks. Watch Bennett in right field coming to your TV screen. See him sprinting? Here he comes. And what he's doing is just in case Walton were to have some trouble. The Bulldog arm in this one. Top of the order for the Crimson Tide. Gage Miller went deep last time he was up. And he hits this hard, but way foul. That ball ricocheted off the top of the Sanford shop. And Carr in that area. One on, one out. Miller Riggins throws another strike that's fouled off again. Not sure if this is the reason, Blake, but the guy Hitton's name is Gage, and he's number 12. That's 12 Gage. Gage Miller 
has got a clip. Two run shot, his last time up, his 12th home run this year. He's in an 0-2 hole this time around against Riggins. Not a bad breaking ball, didn't miss by much. Yeah, tough one to take right there, might have stayed up. Sometimes breaking stuff, especially from a new pitcher, will fool an umpire. Might have been a little high. All season long for Alabama. It's been Gage Miller and the guy on deck, TJ McCants, that have led the way for this offense. One of the best in the SEC. Crimson Tide come into the week second in the conference in batting average, third in slugging percentage. Good block there by Steele, breaking ball in the dirt. Uses his chest protector to block it, keeps the runner at first base. Bulldogs middle infield looking for a double play ball. The 2-2 from Riggins is chops towards Horowitz. He backs up, gets to the bag, and he'll get the out unassisted. Miller retired as out number two. You don't see many. I hope Riggins called time before he threw the ball in the dugout. He did not. I don't know if we have that on replay. We talked about left-handers now. Watch this right here. He ain't called time. He throws the ball into the dugout. Young players, if you don't want the ball, that's okay. Call timeout and make sure you've called timeout before you throw that ball out. I, he did not call time. Blake he threw the not. ball in the dugout. Caleb DeVere, third base umpire, telling him, hey, next time let's call timeout before we throw that Ooh. one away. I mean, you, you think you've seen it all. and. Man. See that play last night, Bryce Harper, Philly's first baseman, tried to throw it around the horn with a man on base. I did not, but I hope he made a good throw. I it was it was on target. I watched the first two innings, and then I think I turned it over to deal or no deal or something. Two balls and no strikes. The count to T.J. McCanns. Saw where Harper hit three home runs yesterday in one game, the first hits he'd had all year. Mr. Harper had a big night for the Phils. Had a funny moment there late in that game as well. Riggins falling behind, gets back in the zone here. Must be nice to make, sign a contract that's one third of a billion dollars. TJ McCants, an MLB draft guy when this season comes to a close, trying to do more damage here in the top of the seventh. He's out front, three balls and a strike. Twelve home runs, 25 total extra base hits already for T.J. McCants. What an impact he's made out of the transfer portal. 3-1 lifted down the line and left, curling foul, and Rodriguez can only watch it sail over that brick wall. This game is far from over, 9-5. Full count, two outs, left on left. Really good hitter at the plate. Already has a homer today. Ball's flying out of here. Game not over for either ball club. Got to keep playing. Riggins trying to end this Alabama seventh. And gets McCants to lift one weekly into left center field. Aaron Walton ranging over, makes the catch. And that will be all for the Crimson Week. Started to begin the year for Alabama. Made six starts already this year. First pitch swing and Andrew Bennett down the line. Foul. Already been another nice day for Bennett at the plate. Multi hits performance. Couple of swings, couple of foul balls. His first look against St. Adams. Yeah, Bennett looks very comfortable now. Um, but what he's going to get here from Adams is he's going to get something down and away, breaking ball change, something bouncing. It's going to be kind of funky. Oh, two in the dirt. Good take there from Bennett. Got to keep battling. Wind's blowing out. If you're Alabama, you got to work hard. If you're Sanford, you got to work hard. A lot of baseball left. Sanford scored all five of their runs the last two frames. Down to their final nine outs of the day. 
chasing yeah. at least four runs. Yeah, and this kind of game, man, a bloop and a blast late. I mean, you just never know. Moen two to two and two. And make it full. This lady just walked in with a couple of pizzas down in the first front row, and it's when you're old like me, you eat about 5.30. Gee whiz, they look good. Give it a few minutes. You'll start oh, smelling it up man. here, too. Might be the move. 3-2 breaking ball is a called strike three, and Adams starts the seventh with a strikeout. Really good pitcher right here by Zane Adams. He drops the hammer on a down and away breaking ball. Really nice pitch, hard to hit. And he gets Bennett looking. So Bennett a strikeout victim. One gone for Cullen Horowitz. He takes a big swing and a miss. 11 hits for the Tide, 10 hits for Samford, 21 combined hits, 14 combined runs, and we got a ways to go yet. That ball looked like it bounced in front of home plate and almost nicked the shoe of Cullen Horowitz. Yeah, that was 90 miles an hour as well. Only Lucas Steele and Aaron Walton hitless today for this Sanford team. Horowitz singled his first time off. For as good as the Alabama offense has been, Sanford's offense hasn't been too shabby either. Just didn't come up with any big swings with men on base until the fifth. Kept off the board by Cade Snell through the first four innings. Spot of the fastball there, 89 miles an hour to get it back to two and two. Going to be tough for Horowitz now. Steady diet, off-speed stuff. Down and away, breaking stuff, changes. Got to hang with them. Two-two, tipped into the mitts, and it's back-to-back -back strikeouts here in the Sanford seven. St. Adams fooled them all and me. This is not off-speed. This is a fastball. It's got some late heat. He blows it by Horowitz for out number two and a good pitch right there by Adams. So Bennett down looking, Horowitz down swinging. Base is empty, two gone for Aaron Walton. Takes a big hook for a strike. second that bounces. I like the pace that Zane Adams works, Blake. He gets his sign and he's ready to pitch. I like it. Adams only a freshman, but a guy that has thrown quite a bit for the Crimson Tide this year through four innings this past weekend against South Carolina. Gave up a couple of runs on three hits, but struck out four. Big innings and Crimson Tide's 4-3 win over the Gamecocks, one of the two they had this past weekend. My daughter likes the game right now. She's a senior at Alabama. My son's pulling for Sanford because he's in med school at Auburn. 3-1 off the plate, ball for Aaron Walton's aboard. Good job by Walton to be impatient, making his way on base here. This one's not even close. He takes it. And Sanford's going to try to get a bloop and a blast here in the seventh to try to get a little bit closer when, with nine-hole man coming up. Again, it was Angelo Prieto at the start of the game. This is the second plate appearance for Cade Carr. Carr takes down and in. I think I might do my walk-up song like something to do with my now, like if I was car, I think I'd do a song by the cars. Something like that. Maybe Chasing Cars by Snow Patrol. Well, that could work as well. Good take, and that skips away. So a free 90 feet for Waltz and gets him in scoring position. Big runner out there for Cade Carr from Hoover, Alabama, freshman. Big runner out there. You you knock him in, you've, you've trimmed it to 
So he's up in the count 2-0. and oh. Might get a heater. Needs to turn and burn. Carr did turn, but fouled it straight back. Yeah, a good swing and a good approach. And you could tell that he's more comfortable with Adams than he was uh, earlier in the game because uh, when he was facing old number 23 earlier, boy, I'm going to tell you now, Moza had a good slider. Two ones up and away. Carr already with two home runs this year as a true freshman. Two of his ten hits. Now what you don't want to do if you're Adams is walk Carr and let Staten hit one out of the ballpark now and make it nine to eight. Three one to Carr is in there. Good take by Carr. Didn't like it. Three one. He wanted it in a small box. It was not in the box. He lived to fight another day. Now he's going into two-strike mode. Adams trying to end this bottom of the seventh with a man at second. The 3-2 is right there. Called strike three. Zane Adams strikes out the side to end the Sanford seventh. Bulldog. For an Alabama offense that has pounded out nine runs on 11 hits and also benefited from eight walks drawn. Manley up the ladder, a bit too tall at 90 miles an hour. The Trent's got the scoring started for the Crimson Tide today. Two run home run off the pole back in the first. Alabama scored the first five runs today before Sanford responded. That's it pretty well into right. Andrew Bennett going back, racing back to the wall. This one, one hops off of it. Petrutz on his way to second and will cruise in with the leadoff double. Yeah, Manley left this one up a little bit. and Petrutz got a hold of it and hit it in the right center field gap. One hop in the wall. You see him busting it right out of the box. Stand up double for the tie to start the eighth. Give Petrus his second extra base hit of this contest. He's at second for Evan Slight. Slight takes inside. Samper can ill afford to give up any more runs. They're already down four late. Deals and misses downstairs and Steele fortunate that stayed nearby. Very fortunate. Two balls, no strikes. Evan Slight looking for an RBI knock here after a single back in the fifth. It's this one on the ground right side. Anderson a long way to go, spinning and makes a fine play. Really good job by Anderson. Had a lot of ground to cover. Bounding ball to his left. Blake told you he spun, which is the play. Throws it perfectly to Horowitz for out one. And uh, I would think Samper would bring the infield in here, but they are back. Field back, Justin LeBron, first pitch swinging, pops this up in front or near the plate. Garrett Staten came all the way from third to make the grab. This is a wonderful job by Staten. This is a hard play for the catcher, getting rid of that mass, wind. Staten's coming toward the ball. Really good job by a veteran leader on this ball club of coming in and making that play. So a big second out. Now the infield can definitely stay back. Kate Snell the batter. And the runner at third can certainly get off. I mean, Staten has slid almost over the shortstop, so you can get a humongous lead at third here. And, and the rule of thumb, Blake, is you get off third as far as the third baseman is from the bag, so I mean, you, he could get up another 20 feet as long as he doesn't allow Manley to run over there and tag him. Three straight out of the zone for Manley here to the 
One time starting pitcher, now DH, Cade Snell. And that's downstairs, so four straight miss. And the Crimson side have runners on the corners now. A big first baseman coming to the plate, Will Hodo. Yeah, four out of the zone now. Now, follow me on this one. They're not going to run Snell here because one of your best arms, you're not going to try to get him hurt sliding into second base in this type of situation. So you don't have to worry too much about him. Manley back into the zone here to start the battle against Toto. Toto has one of the six two-out hits this Alabama offense has collected today. Hits this one in the air pretty well to center field, but playable for Aaron Walton. He's got it, and the Alabama eighth is over, or oh. is it? Oh, my. We Hold on before we go to break. They're saying somebody had timeout before the pitch. Who called timeout? I don't know if we have a replay like the old Bo Jackson play in the All-Star game where he put his hand up. And so hold the phones, everybody. A ball, has a balk been called? Going. Okay, all right, here we go. So a balk was called. Really smart play by the hitter to go ahead and attack the baseball because that's a live ball. So if he would hit the ball out of the ballpark or hit a single, Alabama would have took that. But you take, the, you take the play that benefits the offense. So since it was an out, Alabama said, we'll take the balk. I, I did not see a balk. Didn't, sure didn't hear anybody say balk, but it's 10-5 tied. So a balk is called. Runners move up 90 feet. Hodo stays in the box. Would love to know what the balk was. Didn't see it. Uh, Manley hasn't done anything peculiar. He's been pitching the whole inning with guys on base. Had a chance to get in the dugout throwing up a zero. Would love to know what the balk was. 1-1 one, one slider lifted in the air to left center this time. And again, Aaron Walton ranging over. He's got it once more. And now the inning comes to a close. But the ball this past weekend. Getting a little bit of midweek work in here in this bottom of the eighth. First pitch slides away to Garrett Staten, the Sanford leadoff man. Myers from Oak Grove High School right around the corner. Not too far away. Bessemer, not quite a midway point between Homewood and Tuscaloosa. But not too far away from being a nice stopping point. Trying to get Garrett Staten, who's been on base twice today. Pops this one up near the Sanford dugout. Hodo over there, Wangaran over there, and he's got it. How about the hustle from the Alabama catcher right in front of the dugout railing? Did everything right right here. He pursued the ball. He got rid of his mask so it would be out of his way. Watch him leave it behind him. He knows the ball's coming back. He feels the crushed brick of the warning track under his spikes. He gets over close to the rail. He knows Sanford will not help him because it's not his home, his dugout, and he makes a nice catch. Longarena tracks it down. Garrett Staten's out number one. Garrett Howe takes a cold strike. Sanford down five runs and down to their final five outs in this one. Back-to-back -back sliders. Garrett Howe frozen in the batter's box. He's down 0-2. Howe's been on base twice today. His OBP is going down. For a guy whose on-base percentage is still north of five at 60. Really good player, really good infielder, base runner, hitter, the whole nine yards, total package. Two balls and two strikes. Bulldogs looking for a base runner for the top third of this lineup. Time is running out here for a comeback against a Crimson Tide team that has led the entire way. That's one of those pitches when you take it and you go, oh, because it was close. 
Now a tough guy to strike out. The 3-2 offering off the cap to short. Going to be a tough play for LeBron. His throw just beats how. Yeah, Blake told you that LeBron's a freshman from down there in Florida, and it ain't easy to come into the Southeastern Conference and Division I baseball and play like this. This is an eight ball in the corner pocket off the end of the bat. LeBron flies in, knows he has to get rid of his sidearm quickly, and makes a nice play to tire the speedy how. So the top two in the Sanford lineup card retire. Base is empty for Dan Anderson. And takes a strike, but it has been a huge day for him. Three hits and two RBI hits. His OPS over 12. Anderson's been retired once today. He struck out back in the third. just misses. Really nice wow. pitch. Really nice pitch. Received well, thrown well. Probably a strike. Pretty good up here, but we'll defer. So did that one. Three balls and a strike. I don't, I don't know. Not a guy you want to fall behind to. Myers misses, haven't been by much at all. Anderson on the ground to third. Miller shaded towards the bag, makes the play. And Sanford goes quietly in the eighth with a catcher. Cam Guangarena hitting one more time. Guangarena, then Swinney, then back to the top of the Crimson Tide lineup. Pretty good pitch there for Malone, one and one. Good breaking ball by Malone. Caught the bottom of the strike zone. Crimson Tide hoping they can keep swinging the bats like this. Into this weekend set on the road against Kentucky. Alabama offense has been the story of the team for Rob Vaughn in his first year as the Crimson Tide's head coach. Popped up, left side of the diamond. Garrett Staten, the Sanford third baseman. The shades down, makes the catch for out number one. Yeah, you got wind and sun right now. The left side of the diamond, the Garrett twins have both got on those big bumblebee sunglasses, and they need them. You see Staten get up underneath it using two hands for out one. This would be Mason Swinney. Instead, we got a pinch hitter for the tie to left-handed bat number 15, Coleman Mizell. First pitch hacking. Mizell not wasted him much time. Freshman from Hartsell, Alabama. Getting his 19th at bat this year. Hartsell about an hour and a half north. Coached by the legendary William Booth. Used to always tell his parents if they ever wanted to come meet with him about any players playing time to make sure they brought their uniforms with them in a Walmart sack just in case they couldn't agree. That way they wouldn't have to go back home and get the uniforms. Mizell pops this one up as well. Again, almost same spot, just foul ground this time. And Garrett Staten makes the play on that one as well. Two down. Yeah, easy play for Staten here. He's been playing third around here a long time. Moves over like a wide receiver into foul ground. Makes a catch with two hands. You young players out there, look at these Division I players using two hands. Two hands, that's how you do it. Good start to the ninth for Malone. Back to the top of the order. Gage Miller one more time. Miller, like most days, has been a menace at the top of this Crimson Tide lineup. On base three times, that includes a two-run home run. He's getting a sixth plate appearance here in the top of the ninth.
2-0 hammered into left center field. This ball has got a chance. This ball is gone. The second home run of the game for Gage Miller. And he makes it an 11-5 Alabama lead here in the ninth. Yeah, Miller got it into a cripple count, 2-0. He's looking for one spot. He gets it. And he hits the ball out of the and takes the lead as the Alabama player with the most homers so far this year, and he makes it 11 to 5. How about the year Gage Miller is having? The third time this season, Gage Miller has a multi home run game. Now, TJ McCants trying to go back to back with him for a second time. H. Miller had two home runs in the series opener against Lipscomb. Two home runs in game two in Athens against Georgia. Now he's got two home runs today here in Birmingham against Sanford. Flag blowing out in center field. Wind has been a factor a day. One one to McCants is down and away. Four home runs for the Crimson Tide offense today have come from the top three slots in the lineup. Two for Miller, one from this guy, McCants, and then Ian Petrutz had the first one, the on-deck circle. McCants pops this one up, left side. Garrett Staten's got a chance at all three outs here in the ninth. He's got it. And the Alabama ninth comes to a close. But not before the Crimson Tide tack on one more. As EJ said, already four saves this year. This not a save situation with Alabama in front by a half dozen. But Davis fires in a strike to start the bottom of the ninth against Josh Rodriguez. By the way, one other defensive change for Alabama to note here in the ninth. The new second baseman is Will Portera. Portera takes over at second as Rodriguez is out front two and one. There's Portera after Mizell hits in that nine spot in the Crimson Tide lineup. Rodriguez chops that foul. It's two and two. Going to be tough on the Sanford hitters. Davis is in the sun. Home plate is in the shade. That's a tough situation against a high-level reliever. Going to be a tough one for Sanford here in the ninth. Davis trying to start the bottom of the ninth with a strikeout. And Rodriguez couldn't hold the hands back. Tag applied. And Rodriguez is out number one here in the bottom of the ninth. Yeah, anytime you're facing a high velocity lefty and it's hard to get a read on his release point and so forth, then he snaps off a breaking ball. Rodriguez not able to hold up. He thought he held up, but he did not, and that's out one. Strike call to Lucas Steele, who is hit from the left side and the right side today. Steele still looking for a hit, 0 for 4, with a pop out, a couple of ground balls, and a punch out. Sanford offense today has a whole five runs on 10 hits. But just. Four hits with runners in scoring position out of 13 tries. Bulldogs left a bunch of runners on early. They've left 10 stranded for the game. Alabama's offense has gotten some bigger swings off, although helped by some free passes from the Sanford pitching staff today. 3-1 on the outside part of the plate to run it full. Davis, a 3-2. Off the plate, ball four. Juan Garina wanting to do a snap throw to first as if this was strike three. Got to present it a little better. Looked away anyway. Got to present it a little better. Don't just snatch it out of there. So steal a board in front of Andrew Bennett. Bennett. 
Bennett chops this up the middle. LeBron couldn't get there. It scoots into center field. Still took a big turn around second, but we'll stop right there. It's a three-hit afternoon for Bennett. This ball did something kind of funky when it came behind the grass in front of second base. LeBron thought it was going to come up to him. It did. It kind of slides under. Balls have been bounding on this surface today. That one stayed low to the ground. We used to call those a worm. That's a base. Oh, boy. And Horowitz launches one into left field. Oh, my goodness. This is way out of here. Cullen Horowitz leaves the yard in emphatic fashion. His fifth home run of the year makes this a three-run game. Well, this is like George Foreman boxing when he was 45. You always have the chance for the knockout, the power, the power of number 21, Blackjack Horowitz. He got every single solitary bit of this. Everybody knew it up in the pine trees. Three-run jack for the dogs. So Sanford pulls three back as Aaron Walton swings and misses. And that's the kind of in-game power Colin Horowitz is known for. Walton quickly down nothing and two. And that was the bloop and the blast we've been talking about all game. You had a walk, you had a C&I single, and then you had one that was hit to Shelby County. But it's still 11 to 8 because the score is inflated a little bit. Had some walks here. Had a couple balls go out of the ballpark for the tide. So now if you're Sanford, you're going to try to bring the tie and run to the plate. 1 2 in the dirt. Good take there from Walton. Just the third home run of the year surrendered by Davis. His first he's given up since the Georgia weekend. That was a towering one. 2-2, two -two just missed inside. Big pitch right here. You get Walton on, and then you're trying to, you start to get a little bit of momentum, thinking about getting that tie and run to the plate. 3-2, chopped foul, we'll do it again. Not only that, but you get back around to Staten, who's got seven home runs in a leadoff spot, and then Howe after him, who's the best hitter on the ball club. Pretty good plate appearance here from Walton. On the ground to short, LeBron scoops that one up no problem. And his throw is dropped. Toto couldn't scoop it up. Yeah, that, that, this is not a great throw by LeBron. I didn't think it was that tough of a pick either. He kind of goosed it over there. So not good defense by the Tide. And again, with the ball flying out of here, and coming up toward the top of the lineup, it ain't over yet. Third error committed by Alabama. Tying run now in the on-deck circle. Cade Carr, a big swing and a miss. And today's kind of been a microcosm of what Alabama's been about this year. A lot of offense, but Crimson Tide also entered the week 13th out of 14 SEC teams in fielding percentage. Carr quickly down, nothing and two. Yeah, and Carr's got to figure out a way to move up in the box a little bit and put the ball in play. If you're Davis, keep doing what you're doing. It looks good, you against Carr right now. 0-2 oh, to the freshman, and the dirt skips away. Walton moves up 90 feet and keeps Sanford out of a double play. There ain't no clock out here. It ain't like the final four where you're winning by 18 with three minutes to go and you run the shot clock out in football. You're up two touchdowns with one minute to go. You got to get 27 outs, baby. One, two. Carr couldn't keep the hands back. He is out number two. Yeah, tough day for Carr off the bench. Nice job by Davis really turning it loose here to strike out Carr and check swing and now it's up to Staten to try to get on base for Howe to bring the tie and run to home plate. 94 on the gun that time from Alton Davis. He's got two strikeouts here in the bottom of the ninth. Right here, let's go. That's it. Garrett Staten takes downstairs. And, you know, I'm not so sure right here, Blake, that it wouldn't be the worst idea in the world to take a strike. Davis trying to throw a lot of breaking stuff. None of his breaking stuff's in the strike zone. Might not be the worst idea in the world to take a strike. 
Dayton just barely got a piece of 91. Dayton's been on base twice today as the Sanford leadoff hitter. Had a hit back in the fifth and then walked in the sixth. Let's go, work right here. Aaron Walt to the man at second. That shot into right center field. That's going to get down. Walton scores easily. Staten will trade places with him. He stops at second with an RBI double. And the potential tying run will come to the plate here in the ninth. Great job by Staten, looking away, going away, line drive over the second baseman's head. He's not going to take any chances, but he knows he can Cadillac into second base. That scores Walton and makes it 11-9, and Sanford does bring the tying run to home plate in the person of number two hole hitter, Garrett Howe. Best hitter in the Southern Conference this year, Howe. Trying to keep this game going. First pitch up and in. Now, if you're on defense here, what you're doing is you are telling your outfielders right now, right now, you're telling your outfielders on a single to you, throw the ball to second base. The runner on second means nothing if you're Alabama. Two balls and no strikes to the Sanford shortstop. Now, I'm going to tell you now, if Davis messes around and walks, how? You got a guy with 22 homers last year waltzing into the batter's box in the person of John Anderson. Inside corner, Hal didn't love that call. Well, I can see why. That ball was not presented well. I can see it's been a tight zone all day, and that one was not tight. 2-1, sliced foul in the Crimson Tide, one strike away from escaping with an 11-9 win. Surprised that Justin LeBron is not shading to the six hole. He's to close to the, to the runner at second. Howe hits a lot of balls in the six hole. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Howe lifts it into right center field. That gets down. Staten scores easily. Howe drives in another. And we've got a one-run game. Big time job right here by Hal. Not trying to do too much. Soft serve ice cream out into right field. Nice job. The tying run is on first base and that's gonna be all for Davis. Better than Tyler Fay, the number 13 team in the country. Looked like they were gonna cruise to a six run win. Now it's getting a little bit more nervy. First pitch misses to Anderson outside. Now, if you're Howe at first, you're looking for a dirt ball, but you must be safe at second. You cannot be thrown out at second base. Three hits already today for John Anderson. Pops this one up, first base side, foul ground playable. Longarina towards the screen, can't make the catch. Well, and it has been that kind of ninth inning for the Crimson Tide. It really has. You got a chance. This ball does not have any bad hops in it. It's straight up the elevator shaft. He does get rid of the mass, but he gets turned around, and he misses the baseball, and that gives John Anderson new life. Can Sanford take advantage of a big break? How a healthy lead at first. Anderson through the left side, another Sanford hits. Potential tying run at second and the potential winning run at first on the fifth hit of the frame. That's Sanford's 15th hit of the night. Anderson gets the breaking ball and hits the daylights out of it to left field. That brings the, that brings the tying run to second put base in the, per, in the person of Howe. And it looks like head coach Tony David is going to run for Anderson at first base. That's exactly what he's going to do. And it looks like Blake Portak is going to be the pinch runner for the Bulldogs. <laughs> and Coach David has sent some new arms down to the bullpen. You know, the wheels are always turning because if you tie this and it goes extra innings, then you got to have guys to pitch. So big situation in the game. 
We got to tie and run at second, the win and run at first. Josh Rodriguez ready in the batter's box. Faye starts him with a strike. If you're Rodriguez right here at this point, down 0-1, you're not looking for a specific pitch. You're looking for a strike, and you attack. Phase 01. Off the plate away. Rodriguez, a 310 hitter this year with runners in scoring position. The Alabama outfield deep all the way around. Can't get picked off at first base by the catcher if you are running at first here. Rodriguez chops that foul, and again, Alabama one pitch away from escaping. Birmingham with a one-run victory. Bortak will probably score on any double to win the game. Going to be a slider here. Got to fight it off if you're Rodriguez. The one-two. Swing and a miss. Faye slams the door, and Alabama survives 11-10. Wild ball game. Sanford scores five in the bottom of the ninth. They had the tie and run at second, they had the win and run at first, and they had a